right now we can all very easily see what version of the Linux kernel we're currently running. In my case, I'm using 5.18.10-arch1-1. But what does that actually mean? What does the 5 represent? What does the 18 represent? What does the 10 represent? How does this versioning system actually function? Now, I wish I could say this is the one way it's worked over the entire history of Linux. But when you start a project as an individual, you think nobody's ever going to use it. And then over the next 30 years, it basically becomes the most important kernel in the entire world. Things tend to change a couple of times. And the way I would break it down, there's basically been five different numbering schemes. And where better to start than actually at the start? 0.01 to 1.3 in 1991 to 1994. And this wasn't exactly that exciting of a system, or also really that clear of a system. In fact, I don't think Linus had a system at this point, because looking back on the releases, it seems like either a bunch of releases were never made public, or Linus seemed to just arbitrarily change the version number. So we went from 0.01 .01 to 0.02 to 0.03, and hey look, now we're at 0.10. Oh, now we're at 0.95. What happened to the numbers in between? I don't know. My guess for what happened there is Linus didn't exactly know how much work was going to be required to get to 1.0, and he realized that he started a little bit too early, so he was like, you know what? Um, there's like 5% of effort left, let's just jump ahead to 0.95. And from that point, it kept incrementing basically like you might expect. 0 0.96, 0 0.97, 0 0.98, 0.99, 1.0, 1.1, 1.2, 1.3. 1 now, during this system, another method was actually introduced. This was when a system known as semantic versioning with change significance was being adopted. So if you look at a lot of the version numbers after 0.95, you'll notice it won't just be things like 0.98, it'll be 0.98.6, or 1.0.9. So the first number in this sequence, let's go with 0.98.6. So the 0 here represents the major version. So this is the absolute first version, so we increment from 0, and this is incremented when you make some major incompatible API change. The second digit represents the minor version. This is incremented when you add some functionality, but it's not fundamentally breaking functionality. It should still be backwards compatible with older versions. And then the third digit, this represents the patch or revision version. So when you apply security patches, when you apply bug fixes, this is when you will increment this version. Do keep in mind that it does not indicate the number of changes that were made. So in the case of like 1.0.9, it doesn't mean that nine bug fixes were made, it just means that nine bulk updates of bug fixes were made. If you care more about how semantic versioning works and how it might apply to various other projects, I'll leave a link to the specification in the description down below. It is absolutely worth a read. And now we get to the fun bit where things are being tried out and nobody had any idea what they were doing. From version 2.0 to 2.6 in 1996 to 2003. Now there was one major version between 1.3 and 2.0. This was called Pre 2.0. And I don't have an explanation for its existence. Because there was never a single other kernel that had Pre attached to its name. If someone has a resource on that, I would love to know why, but yeah, that sort of just happened. Let's just pretend that never existed. Now, during this segment, they kept using a modified version of semantic versioning, and the reason why it's modified is because they introduced another system. This was called odd even versioning. So if you go back to 2.0, you'll notice that releases seem to just be missing. You have 2.0, 2.2, 2.4, and 2.6. Where are the odd releases? Well, the way that odd even versioning works is the odd releases are your unstable development branches, whereas the even releases are your stable public releases. 
Now, this is a perfectly fine system if you're a kernel developer or you know about this numbering scheme. If you're not, you're going to be very confused about why kernel versions are seemingly missing. Ultimately, though, this system was dropped and has never returned. Now we have the really weird section, which is commonly referred to as the 2.6 series because kernel version 2.6 was the kernel version for eight years from kernel version 2.6 up to 2.6.39 from 2003 to 2011. This was an uncharacteristically long-lived version number, not just in Linux, not just in open source, but in software in general. So initially this started off fairly sensibly. We had 2.6, 2.6.1, 2.6.2, 2.6.3, so on and so forth, up until 2.6.10, where rather than doing something, you know, sensible and incrementing the 6, instead what they did is added an extra version number. So now we had things like 2.6.11.12. So basically what they did is made the two static and then used semantic versioning, but shifted it over by a decimal. And you know what? That wasn't the worst of it. It got worse than that when there was a release candidate. So you had things like 2.6.16.28-RC2. What is that name? It's a bad name, and you know what? Linus realized it was a terrible name and decided when 2.6.39 rolled around, that was never going to happen again. And now we go back to a sensible numbering system in 3.0 to 4.0 in 2011 to 2015, where basically it went back to a more traditional semantic versioning system, where you'd have things like 3.3.8, or 3.4.10, and things like that. Very easy, very simple to work with, everybody understands what is going on. And in a 2011 blog post over on Google+, Plus, which I didn't realize Linus ever had a Google Plus account, he wrote about the 2.6 series and said, the days of 2.6.bignum are over. I'm close to running out of fingers and toes. Now, I wish that was the end of our story, and I could say that modern Linux versioning basically made sense. It was semantic versioning. Everybody understood what the numbers actually meant. If we go back to the start of the video, my kernel version, ignoring this arch section for now, I'll explain this in a bit, is 5.18.10. This looks a lot like semantic versioning. And if you think that, you are half right. So, here's the thing. The way that modern versioning works looks like semantic versioning, but doesn't actually use the system. The third number still does represent the amount of patches and revisions being made. The second number generally represents the minor version, but the major number doesn't. So <laughs> here's the thing. Linus doesn't like big numbers anymore. So if there are too many patches, he will increment the minor version. If the minor version gets too large, he will increment the major version. So by the time we get to something like 5.20 or 5.21, it'll be 6.0. Is there going to be a API reason why that is the case? No, there's not. Because Linus just wants to keep the number low and increment it when he feels like it. And that probably sounds like a really anticlimactic ending, and you're expecting some sort of like big surprise at the end that's going to make everything either make sense or really exciting. Well, I don't have one, because sometimes reality is boring. Now you won't see this anymore for a stable version, but when it comes to an LTS release, you will still see a large value on the third number. So you'll have things like, say, 4.19.252. And the reason why you can't really get around that is if you want to have a LTS release around for a couple of years, you're going to have to keep patching it. And when you patch it, you need to increment the number to make sure people know it's a different thing. And as you go longer and longer and longer, there's going to have to be a bigger and bigger number. Now, sometimes as a final component, you'll see dash something. So in the case of the mainline kernel, dash RC7. Now, RC is the main one you should care about. RC means release candidate. This is a version of the kernel that isn't going to necessarily be the next stable version, 
but it is something that is being considered for that version. So you have a bunch of different release candidates come out that fix various different things, and then when the maintainers are ready, that'll go from being a release candidate into the next mainline version. There are also some distro-specific things, things like, say, dash arch1 dash1, and I can't really explain these as a generic thing, because different distros are going to be handling them differently. Ubuntu is going to have something different to Arch, and then that's going to have something different to Void and Gen2 and all that fun stuff. But as a general rule, it represents the patches that are being applied on top of the existing mainline kernel. So most distros don't run a vanilla kernel. They make some modifications here and there to make it work better with whatever they're trying to do. Maybe it's a gaming distro, and then we'll apply some gaming patches to it, for example. So that's usually what that means. But if you want a better explanation for your specific distro, I recommend checking out your distro's documentation. And I guess, uh, let me know your thoughts down below. Topics like this are always really, really fun for me to explore. I read a lot of forum posts, a lot of random things out there, because a lot of this stuff is not as documented as you might like it to be. There's not just like a wiki page that explains exactly how the versioning works. It's all pretty spread out. But I hope you guys learned something. And if you did, let me know in the comment section down below. So if you like this video, I'm gonna go and like the video. If you really like the video and you wanna become one of these amazing people over here, Go check out my Patreon, subscribe to the Bear Pay linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over T. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robson Plays. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out.